If you've got one of these Makuni BN, Super BN, Super BN-I, there's a whole mess of Makuni carbs like this. And I've done a video on setting the pop-off pressure, which is imperative to proper function of these machines. Um, however, there are a few more things as far as rebuilding them and some general good practices if you're going to tear into one of these. So I thought we could go over some of those today. I've got a couple of these carbs I need to get rebuilt. So let's pull one of these apart and talk about what comes in the rebuild kit and what you need to do to ensure that your Makuni diaphragm carb on whatever PWC you have, whether it's a single carb, dual carb, triple carb, or the elusive four carb PWCs uh, that used these style of carburetors is running at absolute optimal performance and is enjoyable for you to have. So let's tear into this and see what you need to know. So here's kind of the main stuff that you're going to need in order to rebuild one of these carbs. I've got carb itself, six in one screwdriver, pop off tester, some little needle cleaning uh, probe things, a rebuild kit. Um, I hear a lot of guys say that you should only use a genuine Makuni kit and uh, I don't necessarily think that's true. I've been using these from SBT for a good number of years and have absolutely phenomenal results. I think the key is don't use the cheapest carb kit you can find. Use one by a reputable company, somebody who's been in the business for a while because and follow these instructions. You know, there's, there's some things that you need to do, some things you don't need to do. So get yourself a good carb kit, some sort of a brake cleaner and some sort of lubricant type stuff, uh, WD-40, anything like that. So at the moment though, all of this stuff can go off to the side. All we need is the screwdriver and our carb and a clean working area. Now I've got this rag down because this cardboard isn't the cleanest. So got this rag down so that I've got an area where I can take my carb apart. I've got more rags over there so we can uh, see what needs to be done. So I'm going to start. If you look at the carburetor, the way that it sat on the jet ski, there is this side with this kind of dimple and this hole. This is the diaphragm side. So in here is where your diaphragm, your needle and seat, and the pop-off springs, everything that you need is in there. We're going to start on this other side, the fuel pump side. So there's four screws and most of these are Phillips or flat. They, they have both. And these ones are feel alarmingly like they've been Loctited in or something. And then we're going to separate our fuel pump assembly. So this line, the very top one is the pulse line. Then we take that off. You can see this plastic down in here. There's little gaskets, O-ring type things and then more down in here. Now, there's also a little filter, and this one, I don't know if you'll be able to see, if the camera will focus that close or not, but see how it's dark on this side and clear on that side? That tells us that all of this dark stuff is dirt, and it's just plugged right full of gunk. So set that off to the side, and things like that could cause all kinds of problems with weird running. So once you get to here, you kind of want to start spraying stuff off with a brake clean and getting these gaskets out. Now, if you're not going to replace these for some reason, if you just want to clean your carb, take all your rubber stuff off before you do any brake clean because brake clean will expand the rubber. But since we are replacing a bunch of this stuff, I'm just going to remove it all. So it's good to remember what order everything comes off in though. So gasket here, rubber diaphragm here, gasket here. So you can kind of set it in the order that it came out. Um, uh, we're going to clean all this up. 
Sometimes you don't need to replace all of these um, various diaphragms and like the fuel pump valves in here, but it's a good idea to, if your kit comes with it, just go ahead and replace everything. That way you've ruled it all out. A lot of times these gaskets up here on this pulse line are just miserable to get off. You'll have to end up um, using a razor blade or a wire wheel or something because yeah, they just, they just separate and peel apart in layers. So I'm gonna clean that off and come back to you once this is cleaned. So if you're using a wire wheel, don't go too deep. Just kind of go until the paper is coming off. I don't want to do it over top of this carb. So you can see I just kind of gently went at this. Didn't rub down any of these little ridges and left a little around that alignment pin there, but just kind of smooth it up and get all that garbage off of there. And then you can take a razor blade and just kind of get the last little bit around here. Pull all our parts out of here. What we're gonna find first and foremost is so plastic guy here and then a gasket that will match that. So look around and there's our gasket. There's two different variations of gasket here. So I want to put this on there. Then our little plastic diaphragm goes on top and it's got that locating pin to make sure it's the right way up. And then that on the bottom. You're gonna first of all find your new check valves, which these have little blue stripes on them so you can actually see them. And the little rubber nubs there. Push the rubber nub through the check valve. Then find the side that has the seat. So if you look at this, this side has the seat, this side does not. Flip it over, this side has the seat, this side does not. It's that little ring around the outside is the seat for the valve. So we push this in and just kind of work that a little bit and you can get over here and kind of pick at it with your fingernail while you're pushing from the other side and get that rubber to come through. Sometimes you may need a screwdriver or something, but a lot of times I can get it with my fingernail. Yep. See, that one's through, seated. So we've got a new check valve right there. So we'll do the same on the other side. There you have it. Fuel pump side is basically done. Um, we're gonna need to put in a couple last O-rings and things here. I need to set in our fuel pump or fuel filter, set in our gasket here, then our diaphragm, that's the wrong diaphragm, or it's upside down that in, hold on, that's the wrong one, because see this opening is smaller, so that one in, that one fits perfect. The overing is completely covered. So just line stuff up and it's, it's not that complicated. You just gotta take your time, be patient with it. We'll put our new O-ring in here, so new O-ring in there. Then because this got that seal, this can go on just like that. Then our fuel pump side can go on just like that. And then we put our screws back in. And that's our fuel pump side done. So we'll flip the carb over to our diaphragm side. Now, this is rotated 45 degrees, so it's not square with the carb body. 
and same style screws, Phillips or flat. So inside of here, you've got your needle and seat. Somebody's been in here before because this Phillips screw is completely rounded out. And this one is mostly rounded out. So I don't know that we're gonna be able to get in, maybe with an impact. One of these little manual impact screwdrivers is invaluable for um, situations like this. I'll have a link to all the stuff you need in the description, of course, but this thing, if you don't have one of these, you should get one because you have a partially stripped screw like that. You can put a little pressure on it and then a lot of times you can get them to spin loose. I think this one is just boogered too bad, but this one over here, See, that one cracked right loose. But I don't know that we're gonna get that off because that has already been. Sure enough, what did I tell you? Get yourself one of these impact screwdrivers. Now under here, there's a little one-way valve there we can replace. There's this gasket here. We especially are interested in these two jets though. Um, want to get your jet cleaning kit. You can remove those or you can just clean them in place if you have a little jet cleaning kit like this. So find yourself a that seems pretty clear. So my suspicion is seeing the stuff has been touched in here I'm betting somebody else rebuilt this and didn't set the pop off right, which I see all the time. Uh, which is why I made that other video. Okay, so the spec on this pop off is 21 to 37 PSI. So we're gonna see if that's actually what it is. So we're gonna connect to our in side of our fuel pump. So right there. We're then going to get a little bit of our WD-40 or uh, premix gas, whatever you want, and spray it in here. Tap that lever a few times so that it wets the needle and seat. Then we start pumping. I want to get this somewhere where you can see eh, everything is all bunched up here. Get to somewhere where you can see. We'll plug our other nipple on the fuel pump and start pumping our pop-off tester. So we're about 15, 20, 25. So that's right in spec. I'm going to relieve the pressure here, put more lubricant down in there and double check it again. I usually do this two or three times just to make sure it's good. 10, 20, 25. Okay, so it's set good. Hopefully not too much got on the uh, lens there, but we know that that's good. So at that point, we're going to put our new diaphragm in, put our cover back on and place all of our screws back in. I only got three screws. It always told me I had a screw loose, but you may notice I didn't replace any of the springs. I didn't pull the needle and seat and put this new lever in because if the needle and seat isn't leaking, the pop-off is at the right spec I have found it's better to just not fool with it. You will have more problems from taking apart a um, needle and seat lever and everything where the pop-off is correct than you will if you just leave that alone and replace 
the other gaskets and pieces that you need to. Low mixture has a T handle on it and the high mixture normally has a plastic cap on it. So again, sign somebody's been in here before. Let's check the spec on those. So for this specific machine, low should be one and a quarter turns out, high should be zero turns out. So let's check our high, see where we're set at. Yep, just gently seated. So it can be a good idea to pull these out and just make sure that they're not all nasty, clogged up. See, this one's been tightened in pretty hard, but looks okay. Spray a little brake clean through there. So we'll put this back in at the spec. Which is just gently seated. Don't tighten it like you would a screw. Just go until it stops and then that's good. Um, this one over here, our low side, uh, you can't really see it good because it's behind the throttle, but we're gonna screw this in and count the turns. So there's a half turn, there's one turn, and there's about one and a quarter. So that one is also set up just about right. So let's pull this out, inspect the end of it. All looks happy. Put that back in. And essentially for setting one of these where it has a spec of how many turns you go out, it's simple enough to set. Just turn it in gently until it seats, then go half a turn, one turn, one and a quarter. Just count your turns out, and there you go. That carb is ready to be reinstalled. So that pretty much sums up everything you need to know in order to get the Makuni carburetor on whatever PWC you have working flawlessly. So everything you need to know is gonna be down in the description, whether that's the tools, whether that's some resources that have some information on the initial settings or the screws that hold that metering block in that seem like they're made of butter. Every one of those just seems like they strip out. And as you saw in the video, mine already were partially stripped out. So I replaced those screws with some new nice ones. All of that information is down in the description and you may need to still do a tiny bit of fine tuning on the lake so that you can get the smoothest transition from idle to full throttle without any flat spots. So those high and low screws can be turned in or out a little bit in order to find the sweet spot for your specific engine jet ski combination. But starting out at the optimal settings that are in the information linked below is usually a great starting point. And you may only need a quarter turn one direction or other to make it absolutely flawless. So hopefully this has all been helpful to you and gets you on the water just in time for spring. So thanks for watching.